Hey everybody, good morning. It's Lid Shaw, recording Studio Rockstars, and here's another tip from the car. So, hope you guys are all doing very, very well. We got a nice frosty morning here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I got a great message from one of our rock stars, Pat, who emailed me, and, uh, and uh, also, a reminder, we have our private Facebook group. It's a Facebook slash group slash Recording Studio Rockstars, so please go there and, and uh, just click on the invite and I will add you to the group and it's a great way for us to have a conversation or for you to uh, ask questions or answer questions. But So I got a contact from Pat and Pat had a great question. He actually was a really frustrating question on his part. He had experienced something that I would wish on none of us, which is he lost a hard drive. So he had a hard drive that was full of all of his projects, um, stuff he was working on. It may have been, um, he may have had stuff that, you know, was his, stuff that was other folks, whatever. Uh, but this could happen to any of us. And it's inevitable that a hard drive will crap out on you, will stop working will just give up because they're physical things you know they're spinning even the solid state ones uh, actually are disintegrating every single time you use them that's the way a solid state drive works it, it deletes and erases old segments while it's um, burning them and, and using new ones they don't last very long now that all that said the question is how do you avoid losing important projects and material when this kind of inevitable stuff happens and the answer is in backup that's the, that's the only way I know of. And so when I was asked, how do I deal with backup stuff? I thought I would share that with you guys and let you know what my process is. Uh, it's not perfect at all, but it is a process. And that's the most important part is that you just have a regular way of managing your content and backing things up and taking care of your work so that you don't lose anything. So what I like to do is I like to always have duplicate drives. Now I've heard it suggested probably by the, the hard drive manufacturers that triple backup is the way to go and triple backup is the most effective, but I don't do that. I actually do double backup. Um, sometimes I have triple if I have something copied elsewhere at the same time. Uh, and sometimes I have triple if the client has a copy of it and then I've got double. But the way I do it is I'll have two hard drives going. This is the way I'm doing it now. I've got two hard drives in my work computer in the studio. And in this case, they're both internal because it was I have a MacBook, or excuse me, a Mac tower. So it's really easy to um, have multiple drives inside it. And I have one hard drive, which is a dedicated work hard drive. And that one, I just always work of when I'm opening my Pro Tools sessions, Logic sessions, whatever I'm doing. Even if I'm doing a podcast interview, I'm just always working on that one. And that one would be called Master. So I would have a master hard drive in the computer that I can just see on the desktop. Then I also have a backup hard drive that in this case is internal. It doesn't have to be, but in my case it is. Uh, and I have both of those hard drives are usually matched in size so that whatever I put onto the master drive and fill up there, I have the ability to duplicate it over on the backup hard drive and keep a copy, a full-size copy. A couple of things. So it, when I start out a day in the studio, I always, in this case, make sure to, uh, or actually in any case, I make sure to unmount the backup hard drive when I get started. This is really important. You do not want to leave your backup drive running while you're working because you might accidentally open a file from the backup drive instead of from your master drive. And you do not want to accidentally work on the wrong session. You don't want to spend the day working on the session that happened to be in your backup drive or maybe somebody else is help helping you or maybe somebody else sat down at your computer and opened the session for you when you weren't looking. So there are just too many ways that you could be working on the wrong session. The reason that's a problem is because at the end of the day, you're going to most likely delete what was on the backup drive and you know call what was on the master drive your master recording. So if you were working on the wrong one, you're gonna get mixed up and, uh, and lose that. So when you start the day, unmount the backup drive. Make sure it's disconnected from the computer or unmounted and there's no way that you possibly be working on it. 
then you can work on your master drive during the day and then when you're done that's usually when I do it I'm now using uh, well let me back up so I used to before I had backup software just simply drag the folder from the master drive over to the backup drive and that was a quick and easy way to um, well I shouldn't say quick it's an easy way to back up all my files for for the master over to the backup at the end of the day however it does require that you have to wait around while it copies the entire folder. So as your session gets bigger and bigger, it's gonna take longer and longer to copy this stuff over. And that could be, um, you know, all of a sudden you, you could have like 50 gigs that you're trying to cop over, copy over. So that's slow, slow process. But now I use an app, I'm on a Macintosh, I use an app called Chronosync. Chronosync is, sorry, I got my jingling now marathon thing here. <laughs> See if I get to jingle a little less. Chronosync is an app that backs up files for me on my Macintosh and I, I think it's you know, 30 bucks or something like that so it's really affordable. It might be in the App Store. If it's not you can just find it on Google and download it um, and I think it may be uh, one installation per computer or something like that. Um, if you buy it. I think you have to buy one for every computer you're going to use. But anyway, Chronosync will let me just open up that file at the end or open up the app at the end of my, my work day and then it will copy everything that's new from the master drive over to the backup drive. And <clears throat> so that's a big time saver. I can just open up. I have a saved one called, you know, master to backup, backup, end of day backup. I just open that one, press go, and it goes over. Now, reminder, before I open Chronosync, I have to remount the backup drive. Um, if you have an external backup drive, it's easy to just simply plug it in and then that will mount it onto the computer. In my case, it's internal, so I have to open up the Disk Doctor Utility, or the um, Disk Utility, I think is what we're calling it now in Mac. It, names change over the years. But Disk Utility, and then you can mount the backup drive and, and do the backup. So. I know I'm taking a while to explain this, but I want to be really thorough because this stuff's important. That's my backup procedure for my work drive and my backup drive while I'm working on a project. When it's time to be done with a project or when it's time for me to move it off of my work drive because I'm not going to be working on it for a while, then I have a pair of archive drives. So every time I'm going to get a new archive drive, which is just a backup one that I'm going to keep you know, stored on the shelf most of the time then I always just get two. I just go on eBay or go on Amazon uh, or wherever I'm ordering off the, the internet and I order two of the same size, match drives, so that as soon as they arrive I put stickers, that's another thing, I always put stickers and labels on the drives if they're external. I never just, don't leave a drive just blank with the name only written in the computer. There's too much room for error there and you won't know where it is and you won't won't be able to find it easily. So just, I get little um, mailing labels and I just put one of those on the new drive when it comes in. I write on there, you know, archive drive and the, and the year, usually if I'm only needing a couple every year if I'm getting a terabyte or two terabytes. And then um, I'll have duplicates of that. I'll, I'll also put stickers on the other important parts. If there's a power supply for that drive, make sure you put a sticker on the power supply so that you don't ever lose it or you don't mix it up or you don't accidentally plug the wrong power supply into a different hard drive. In some cases that could actually fry a drive. So you wanna be pretty careful about that. You don't wanna just stick any old power supply in, in any old hard drive. Um, I'll even put stickers on the cables that connect the drives to the computer because some of these cables are proprietary and you don't have a lot of them laying around and it's really frustrating if you can't find it later when it's time to do a backup. Now the last bit of information that's really critical is that um, I ask the clients, if I'm working with the client, when, when they uh, start a session I remind them to bring a hard drive with them for backup and for taking all their material home with them. So I always let the clients know that they are responsible for their master recordings and I am not liable for them, but they are. But at the same time, I let them know that yes, of course, I'm gonna be keeping a backup of it. I've got it here, it's a safety, you know, in case you need it, but you are responsible for your sessions. Um, 
if we're working on a project during a certain number of days, I might not give them the final to take home until we get to the end of those days. And, and in that case, I might be responsible for it while we're working on it. But once they leave, I don't want to be responsible as, you know, considered like a, a cloud version of their session or a library. I can't be the, the archive for it so that um, they're counting on me a year from now when it's time to deliver something. That's their responsibility. But here's the thing. By keeping backups yourself for your clients, now all of a sudden when they do contact you a year from now and they ask for a song, and I just had this happen again this Christmas, um, an artist that I hadn't seen in uh, two years at least, uh, maybe three, I think it was a couple of years, needed a song, needed a session. So I had it all there on an archive. I was able to go find it, pull it off. I let the artist know, hey, <clears throat> let me go see. I, I should have it, a copy of it, and I'll get it to you, no problem. I typically charge a $100 flat fee for returning, uh, for pulling this off of the archives. Excuse me, I got messages popping up on the screen. Um, so the, it, whatever fee you want to charge, the point is by doing that, uh, you're actually letting the client know that you are taking extra time to back this stuff up and go pull it from them and deliver it over the internet. Uh, but more important, now of course you can waive this if you want to, but here's the reason why I do it. This is the fun, These are the funds that I use to purchase these archive hard drives. So I'm doing a favor for clients, you would be doing a favor for your clients, by keeping archives of every session you work on and keeping backups of them for the future. But in order to pay for those double hard drives, if you have one or two clients a year that are looking for a copy of it and you just charge a small fee, there you go, you've got it covered. Now you don't have to think twice about it and you don't have to get frustrated at the expense of keeping these extra hard drives. I think I covered everything. That was a lot longer than I anticipated, but thanks for watching. I hope that's helpful. A reminder, backup, backup, backup every day. The app you want to get is Chronosync if you're on a Mac, and then you can find other apps if you're on a PC, um, but there's plenty out there. It's possible that Time Machine on a Mac would do the same thing. I actually don't use it, so I haven't dug into it and, and uh, figured out what it's capable of. I always saw it as a way to back up everything on your Mac as opposed to selective sessions. Um, and then just think about having two copies of every hard drive you've got. That's the way to deal with it. Um, I guess the last thing I would say about it is I never, ever, ever use the backup for anything. It's just a backup of the master in case the master fails. That way I don't ever get confused. I don't use the backup drive to do a little extra work on. If it's a portable hard drive, I don't put some other project on it and then hand it off to somebody to take to another computer and you know, try and remember that, oh yeah, where was I? Was I working on the backup drive? Was I working on the master? I try and keep it really simple so that there's no confusion. So that if at any t point in time I could erase everything on the backup drive and uh, knowing that it was all on the master drive if I needed to. So that's just to keep in mind, keep those things simple and separated, double copies of everything, and you will likely be in a good position. If you do ever lose music or stuff on your hard drive, like what unfortunately happened to Pat, it's happened to me in the past, and I've seen it happen to other friends, then you can go online and there are services that, that you usually have to pay a lot for. It's usually $1,000 or more, it used to be, to recover a hard drive for you. So there are services that you can physically go into. They can take a hard drive apart or you can send your hard drive to. They can actually disassemble it and take the platters out in a clean room and try and extract all the data from you. From there, you might be able to save your sessions if that happens. However, um, you can also sometimes do it over the internet. I've heard about a company that did it with my friend that was able to go through his hard drive and extract the data bit by bit and then put it back together. So there you have it. I wish the best of luck and uh, remember to always back up. Cheers, Lidshaw, Recording Studio Rockstars. Thanks for watching. Bye.